Uh, let's see, time is 6.49 now. We're going to talk about uh, our bills, electricity, gas bills as well. Steph, what have you got for yeah, us? Yeah, big Morning. news from British Gas yesterday. They're putting up bills, so let me tell you a little bit about it. Morning, everyone. Yeah, British Gas is, of course, the UK's biggest supplier of gas and electricity. So whenever it puts up its prices, it hits an awful lot of people. Now, the energy provider has said that from the end of May, its standard tariff will rise by an average of 5.5%. That works out at about £60 on the average dual fuel bill. And it will affect 4.1 million people who are customers on this tariff. And it means the average annual dual fuel bill is now £1,161. And it's the second price hike from British Gas in eight months. So why are bills going up? Well, with me is Claire Osborne, who's from U-Switch. Thanks very much for joining us, Claire. So what's the reason that British Gas has given for why they've put up prices again? Well, the reason that they've given is the increase in policy costs and the increase in wholesale costs. But I think why is a really important question to ask. This tariff is now £369 more expensive than the cheapest deal in the market. And the price change is adding £246 million to the cost for households who are already struggling with energy bills. And so um, I think it's important to ask why. And I think uh, the, the uh, energy minister just yesterday came out and said that they felt that the the reasons British Gas had given were unjustified. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's fair for us to look at things like um, the, the potential introduction of a price cap and the way that that's providing both incentive and also protection for British Gas as, as competition reduces in that area and uh, they uh, suffer less from the threat of customers leaving mm -hmm. as a result of rises like this. Yeah, yeah, so they're saying basically they're paying more for the energy the fact that they've got green taxes and things like that to pay for, and also the rollout of smart meters. So that's the reason that they're given for this. So do you think, given that that's something which affects all companies, that we'll see others start to increase their prices now? Well, I think it's right that it does affect all companies. We also see a pattern of um, companies often, you know, rising their prices together, you know, using the PR cover of one uh, company having put their prices up. And so uh, it's difficult to predict, but, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't see more pr uh, price rises. We already saw E.ON reduce uh, the discounts on its standard variable tariff, and those are the really expensive tariffs that you want to get off. Um, so, yeah, I think I think we should be watching to see whether more happen. Mm. And it, it's interesting because we it, it really... Really annoys people, doesn't it, whenever their energy bills go up. But if you look at what the money goes to, what they get from a bill, not a lot of it's profit. Yeah, it is a relatively small amount compared to other industries. But certainly in the case of British Gas, when we look at their results last year, it is still significantly above what uh, the Competition Markets Authority re recommended it should be. They lost 750,000 customers last time around, and their profits were still rising. And so for customers, I'd be incredibly upset, particularly when there's such great alternatives out there now. There are providers who are providing products, like I said, £369 cheaper, better service and quite often renewable as well. So uh, taking 10 minutes to, to compare and look around is really valuable. Are we getting better at that? Because I've talked about that God knows how many times, about the fact that people are not switching still. Yeah, absolutely. We, we're quite frequently seeing record months of switching uh, recently. And so we're seeing some really good green shoots in that area. And with uh, now more than 60 energy companies in the market, there's so many great options. So I think people are increasing in their confidence to go and make that choice. And I think that's incredibly important because consumers should be under no illusion that this British Gas Standard Variable Tariff is a poor deal, as well as the Placement that's being um, proposed for it, which is only £25 cheaper. If you're on a standard variable tariff with any supplier, you really should be comparing. Yeah, interesting. Claire, thank you very much for your time this morning. I appreciate that. Uh, I'll be back a little bit later on with Tesco. And it's Tesco, UK's biggest supermarket chain, published its annual results. Steph, tell us what's going on. Yeah, so what's these happened? are their full year results, and they have skyrocketed. They're at wow. £1.3 billion. Pounds. It's a real turnaround story, this. But I think we forget sometimes how big Tesco is, and it has been for a long time. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about Aldi and Lidl doing well, but they're nothing in comparison to the size of Tesco. So Aldi and Lidl combined have about 15% of the grocery market. Tesco has 28%. Right. So one pound in every four pound we spend in groceries goes to Tesco. So, but they've, they've been hit by problems. So, you know, I've talked for a long time about the, there was the accounting scandal where they'd overstated their profits. That really hit them hard. It wiped two billion pounds off their share price at the time and various managers got into trouble for it. Um, also, they've been hit by the rising cost of food that lots of the supermarkets uh, have been hit by and the fact that 
the discounters like Aldi and Little have been slowly eating away at the market share. But today, definitely, things are looking much better for them. Their sales are up now. They're about 2.2% up. That's when you compare shops that have been up. And when you compare the same shops, like for like sales is what we call it in the UK. So things, and they be, they have That's been on a turnaround plan yeah. as well. It's been a, a big thing for them to try and bring down their debt, cut back on uh, their spending and that's what they seem to be doing. Finally working. Let's go straight to Steph. You've got uh, these figures from Tesco in this morning. Yeah, very good news for them. It'll be interesting to see what happens uh, when their share prices open at eight to see whether they go up because they're very good results from them this morning. Morning, everyone. Yeah, of course, I don't need to tell you, Tesco's a huge retailer, the biggest in the UK, but it's been, it's fair to say, a tough few years for them for lots of different reasons. Now, a few years ago, Tesco was regularly reporting huge profits. It hit a record of nearly four billion pounds profits for full year back in 2012. But that all came to a bit of a halt in 2014 after an accounting scandal. So Tesco revealed it, it had misstated its profits, which led to an investigation by the Serious Fraud Office. By 2015, Tesco reported a pre-tax loss of £6.4 billion the biggest loss suffered by a UK retailer and about £4 billion of that was down to the fall in the property value of its UK store. So lots of reasons they were hit, uh, but particularly it was the stores out of town because of the way we changed how we shopped. Well, since then, the boss, Dave Lewis, has been uh, is sticking to a turnaround plan. He's sold off overseas divisions. He's cut 10,000 jobs, a lot of them in management. Now, if you look at how many people Tesco employs, it's still huge. It employs around 300,000 people overall in the UK and this morning it has announced a pre-tax profit of £1.3 billion. Uh, well let's talk about all of this with the retail analyst Brian Roberts. Good morning to you morning. Brian. I mean it's such an interesting story Tesco isn't it but they will be pleased about today's results surely. Yeah an incredibly solid set of numbers both in terms of sales. Uh, you know a lot of this growth in the UK driven by food which is obviously the core part of their business. I think you know it's easy to forget that just three years ago you know, Tesco was in all sorts of trouble when Dave Lewis arrived you know the basic in-store experience was appalling. So, you know, lack of availability, lack of um, staff, lack of service. And since then, he's really stuck to the basics of getting people back onto the shop floor, making sure products are on the shelves. And, uh, yeah, shoppers are responding quite favourably to this. Lots of innovation recently as well in terms of um, their own brand products. Um, and obviously the big uh, the big news over the last year has been the, the um, acquisition of Booker. Yeah. And a lot of eyes are now on uh, what Dave Lewis has in store for trying to bring those two businesses together. And just explain Booker to those who don't know it. Um, yeah, for, I think for you know, us as shoppers, it's probably quite unfamiliar because it's a cash and carry business open to members only, largely um, independent shopkeepers or you know, restaurants, those type of things. Um, so there might be a bit more integration so that you know, there's one store in Cambridge, for example, which is actually now has a sort of mini booker within it called Chef Select, which is open to the public. Um, so we might start seeing you know, more visible signs mm -hmm. of integration between the two businesses. But I think for the foreseeable future, they'll probably remain quite separate, you know, one for the public and one for um, independent tradesmen. And looking at Tesco, I think sometimes you can forget how big it is with 28% yeah. of the market share. And often we talk about Aldi and Little doing well, but, but they're tiny, aren't they, in comparison to Tesco? Yeah, so combined, they're just 12% of the market. Tesco, as you said, around 30%. But um, I think as an industry, everyone's getting used to the fact that discounters will probably double in size to reach a quarter of the market. You know, they're opening uh, dozens of stores um, you know, between them every year. Every store they open takes market share away from the other big supermarkets. I think Tesco, like all of the other big four, has resigned itself to the fact that you know there's a big structural change underway. More and more people will shop with discounters. It's not just Aldi and Lidl, it's also the other guys like B&M and Home Bargains mm -hmm. who are taking market share in grocery too. So lots and lots of challenges, but that said, we shouldn't take away from a brilliant set of numbers from Tesco, which is firmly back on recovery. And if we're talking about customers, what all this means for them, you know, we, we had been talking about food prices going up. What, what's it looking like the future for being a, a supermarket customer, do you think? Um, I think uh, Tesco mentioned again this morning that it's worked incredibly hard with its suppliers to keep a lid on inflation. So, you know, collaborating with big suppliers to, to, to keep price, price rises to a minimum, also taking some of that on the chin in terms of lower profits for themselves as well. But, you know, overall, when we're looking ahead to Brexit and the, the, the cost pressures coming in both food and non-food. It's likely that as shoppers, we are going to see prices start to you know, creep up over time. Mm -hmm. And certainly in some categories, we've already seen some quite big hikes already. So, uh, it's very hard to predict the future in this. Of course, this, yeah. This, this, You'd this, be a very uh, rich man if you could. Indeed, yeah. Uh, but yeah, with, with Brexit on the way and, and so on. But, uh, it's yeah, the think, uncertainty, isn't it? Yeah, the, but uh, the supermarkets and the, the, the big suppliers are working very hard to make sure that we sort of feel less pain. Yeah. Brian, thank you very much for your time this morning. I appreciate that. That's it for me for now. Thank you very much. So very interesting.